Good morning, students. Hope you are all doing well. This is Dr. Badakam Faruqi, Associate Professor of English at BSR Government Arts College, Alwa. Today, we shall talk about Arthur Miller's play, Death of a Salesman. This lecture pertains to MA Final Year, Paper 5B. Well, uh, before we discuss the critical summary of the play, let us have a word about the characters of the play. Well, my dear students, Miller's Death of a Salesman is a classic work of art. Yeah, it is a classic indeed. It is gripping, moving, touching and tragic. It is a play in 2x written in 1948 and produced in 1949. Miller described the play as the tragedy of a man who gave his life or sold it in pursuit of the American dream. And who is that man who sold his life in pursuit of the American dream? He is of course Willie Loman. He is the protagonist of the play, the central character around whom the story moves. Besides Willie Loman, we have Linda Loman, Willie's wife, Biff Loman, Willie's elder son, Happy Loman, Willie's younger son, Charlie, Willie's neighbor and friend, Bernard, Charlie's son, Ben, Willie's deceased elder brother. So these are the major characters that figure in the play. Dear students, uh, we have eight slides in this PPT. We shall read together and discuss. Okay. Or uh, let us do one thing. I shall first read out to you all the slides so that you know and understand the story in totality. Having done, the, having done this, we shall reread the summary and together discuss the major points. Yeah, you know, reading the story in fragments in small bits will be something like uh, watching a nice movie with too many commercial bits. Isn't that disgusting? Now, let us begin without any further delay. Listen to me very attentively and please do not budge from your seats unless the story is complete. Death of a Salesman, a critical summary. As a flute melody plays, Willie Loman returns to his home in Brooklyn one night. Exhausted from a failed sales trip, his wife Linda tries to persuade him to ask his boss, Howard Wagner, to let him work in New York so that he won't have to travel. Willie says that he will talk to Howard the next day. Willie complains that Biff, his older son, who has come back home to visit, has yet to make something of himself. Linda scolds Willie for being so critical and Willie goes to the kitchen for a snack. As Willie talks to himself in the kitchen, Biff and his younger brother, Happy, who is also visiting, reminisce about their adolescence and discuss their father's babbling which often includes criticism of Biff's failure to live up to Willie's expectations. As Biff and Happy, dissatisfied with their lives, fantasize about buying a wrench out west, Willie becomes immersed in a daydream. He praises his sons, now younger, who are washing his car. The young Biff, a high school football star, and the young happy appear. They interact affectionately with their father who has just returned from a business trip. Willie confides in Biff and Happy that he is going to open his own business one day, bigger than that owned by his neighbor, Charlie. Charlie's son Bernard enters looking for Biff who must study for math class 
in order to avoid failing. Willie points out to his sons that although Bernard is smart, he is not well liked, which will hurt him in the long run. A young girl in dentures and the boys leave to do some chores. Willie boasts of a phenomenally successful sales trip, but Linda coaxes him into revealing that his trip was actually only meagerly successful. Willie complains that he soon won't be able to make all of the payments on their appliances and car. He complains that people don't like him and that he is not good at his job. As Linda consoles him, he hears the laughter of his mistress. He approaches the woman who is still laughing and engages in another reminiscent daydream. Willie and the woman flirt and she, th she thanks him for giving her his talkings. The woman disappears and Willie fades back into his prior daydream in the kitchen. Linda, now mending his stockings, reassures him. He scolds her mending and orders her to throw a stocking out. Bernard bursts in, again looking for Biff. Linda reminds Willie that Biff has to return a football that is stole, and she adds that Biff is too rough with the neighborhood girls. Willie hears the woman laugh and explodes at Barnard and Linda. Both leave and though the daydream ends, Willie continues to mutter to himself. The older happy comes downstairs and tries to quiet Willie. Agitated, Willie shouts his regret about not going to Alaska with his brother Ben, who eventually found a diamond mine in Africa and became rich. Charlie, having heard the commotion, enters. Happy goes off to bed and Willie and Charlie begin to play cards. Charlie offers Willie a job, but Willie, insulted, refuses it. As they argue, Willie imagines that Ben enters. Willie accidentally calls Charlie Ben. Ben inspects Willie's house and tells him that he has to catch a train soon to look at properties in Alaska. As Willie talks to Ben about the prospect of going to Alaska, Charlie, seeing no one there, gets confused and questions Willie. Willie yells at Charlie, who leaves. The younger Linda enters and Ben meets her. Willie asks Ben impatiently about his life. Ben recounts his travels and talks about their father. As Ben is about to leave, Willie daydreams further, and Charlie and Bernard rush in to tell him that Biff and Happy are stealing lumber. Although Ben eventually leaves, Willie continues to talk to him. Back in the present, the older Linda enters to find Willie outside. Biff and Happy come downstairs and discuss Willie's condition with their mother. Linda scolds Biff for judging Willie harshly. Biff tells her that he knows Willie is a fake, but he refuses to elaborate. Linda mentions that Willie has to Willie has tried to commit suicide. Happy grows angry and rebukes Biff for his failure in the business world. Willie enters and yells at Biff. Happy intervenes and eventually proposes that he and Biff go into the sporting good business together. Willie immediately brightens and gives Biff a host of tips about asking for a loan from one of Biff's old employers, Bill Oliver. After more arguing and reconciliation, everyone finally goes to bed. X second opens with Willie enjoying the breakfast that Linda has made for him. Willie ponders the bright seeming future before getting angry again about his expensive appliances. Linda informs Willie that Biff and Happy are taking him out to dinner that night. Excited, 
Billy announces that he's going to make Howard Wagner give him a New York job. The phone rings and Linda chats with Biff, reminding him to be nice to his father at the restaurant that night. As the light fade on Linda, they come up on Howard playing with a wire recorder in his office. Billy tries to broach the subject of working in New York, but Howard interrupts him and makes him listen to his kids and wife on the wire recorder. When Willie finally gets a word in, Howard rejects his plea. Willie launches into a lengthy recalling of how a legendary salesman named Davy Singleman inspired him to go into sales. Howard leaves and Willie gets angry. Howard soon re-enters and tells Willie to take some time off. Howard leaves and Ben enters, inviting Willie to join him in Alaska. The, young, the younger Linda enters and reminds Willie of his sons and Joel. The young Biff enters and Willie praises Biff's prospects and the fact that he is well liked. Ben leaves and Bernard rushes in, eagerly awaiting Biff's big football game. Willie speaks optimistically to Biff about the game. Charlie enters and teases Willie about the game. As Willie chases Charlie off, the lights rise on a different part of the stage. Willie continues yelling from off stage, and Jenny, Charlie's secretary, asks a grown up Bernard to quiet him down. Willie enters and prattles on about a very big deal that Biff is working on. Daunted by Bernard's success, Willie asks Bernard why Biff turned out to be such a failure. Bernard asks Willie what happened in Boston that made Biff decide not to go to someone's school. Willie defensively tells Bernard not to blame him. Charlie enters and sees Bernard off. When Billy asks for more money, then Charlie usually loans him. Charlie again offers Willie a job. Willie again refuses and eventually tells Charlie that he was fired. Charlie scolds Willie for always needing to be liked and angrily gives him the money. Calling Charlie his only friend, Willie exists on the verge of tears. At Frank's chop house, Happy helps Stanley, a waiter, prepare a table. They ogle and chat up a girl, Miss Fawcett who enters the restaurant. Biff enters and Happy introduces him to Miss Fawcett, continuing to flirt with her. Miss Fawcett, a cold girl, leaves to telephone another girl at Happy's request and Biff spills out that he waited six hours for Bill Oliver and Oliver didn't even recognize him. Upset at his father's unrelenting misconception that he, Biff, was a salesman for Oliver, Biff plans to relieve Willie of his illusions. Willie enters, and Biff tries gently at first to tell him what happened at Oliver's office. Willie blurts out that he was fired. Stunned, Biff again tries to let Willie down easily. Happy cuts in with remarks suggesting Biff's success and Willie eagerly awaits the good news. Biff finally explodes at Willie for being unwilling to listen. The young Bernard runs in shouting for Linda and Biff, happy, and Willie start to argue. As Biff explains what happened, their conversation recedes into the background. The younger Bernard tells Linda that Biff failed Matt. The restaurant conversation comes back into focus and Willie criticizes Biff for failing math. Willie then hears the voice of the hotel operator in Boston and shouts that he is not in his room. Biff scrambles to quiet Willie and claims that Oliver is talking to his partner about, give, about giving Biff the money. 
Willie's renewed interest in probing questions of Biff Maul and he screams at Willie. Willie hears the woman laugh and he shouts back at Biff, hitting him and staggering. Miss Forsyth enters with another cold girl letter. Biff helps Willie to the washroom and finding happy flirting with the girls argues with him with him, with him about Willie. Biff storms out and happy follows with the girls. Willie and the woman enter, dressing themselves and flirting. The door knocks and Willie hurries the woman into the bathroom. Willie answers the door. The young Biff enters and tells Willie that he failed math. Willie tries to usher him out of the room, but Biff imitates his math teacher's lisp, which elicits laughter from Willie and the woman. Willie tries to cover up his indiscretion, but Biff refuses to believe his stories and storms out, dejected, calling Willie a phony little fake. Back in the restaurant, Stanley helps Willie up. Willie asks him where he can find a seed stove. Stanley gives him directions to one and Willie hurries him off. The light comes up on the Loman kitchen where Happy enters looking for Willie. He moves into the living room and sees Linda. Biff comes inside and Linda scolds the boys and slaps away the flowers in Happy's hand. She yells at them for abandoning Willie. Happy attempts to appease her, but Biff goes in search of Willie. He finds Willie planting seeds in the garden with a flashlight. Willie is consulting Ben about $20,000 per position. Biff approaches him to say goodbye and tries to bring him inside. Willie moves into the house followed by Biff and becomes angry about Biff's failure. Happy tries to calm Biff, but Biff and Willie erupt in fury and he fury at each other. Biff starts to sob, which touches Willie. Everyone goes to bed except Willie, who renews his conversation with Ben, elated at how great Biff will be with $20,000 of insurance money. Linda soon calls out for Willie but gets no response. Billy and Happy listen as well. They hear Willie's car speed away. This is important, so I repeat. Elvin goes to bed except Willie, who renews his conversation with Ben. Elated at how great Biff will be with $20,000 of insurance money, Linda soon calls out for Willie but gets no response. Biff and Happy listen as well. They hear Willie's car speed away. In the requiem, Linda and Happy stand in shock after Willie's poorly attended funeral. Biff states that Willie had the wrong dreams. Charlie defends Willie as a victim of his profession. Ready to leave, Biff invites Happy to go back out west with him. Happy declares that he will stick it out in New York to validate Willie's death. Linda asks Willie for forgiveness for being unable to cry. She begins to sob, repeating, we are free. All exit, and the flute melody is heard as the curtain falls. Thank you.